This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is The Ties That Bind. And today, we have my new best friend. <laughs> and as our audience knows, I only talk to my best friends. <laughs> but this, this lovely lady is Representative Beth Ukamoto. And I have to tell you this, this is really special. This is a new for me, anyway. Um, a year after quitting the Republican Party, she joined the Democratic Party as a state rep, and now she is seeking a seat in the House of Representatives. She is going to leave Hawaii and go to the big time. <laughs> all of this within a year. Well, welcome, yeah. Beth. Thank welcome. you. Welcome, and tell us all about Beth. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. What district do you live in? I live in uh, District 36, which is Milani and Milani Malka. So, I, I, I'm a political junkie, okay. as you may know. <laughs> but what I don't understand is that I have seen so many smart, uh, lovely, beautiful women in the Republican Party, and then they get pushed out. <laughs> what happens? What is that about? Yeah, there are a lot of things. You know, I think um, for me, because I've always been a moderate, there was definitely a philosophical issue. So as a, as a Republican, I was considered a moderate, often labeled progressive. Um, and I think even when we're seeing within the Democratic Party, there are many people way more conservative than I am. Oh, oh <laughs> um, and I'm oh, yes. actually much further left than, <laughs> yes. than most. Yes. Uh, and so I think philosophically I wasn't fitting where I was, but I think a lot of women, especially women who are pro-choice in the Republican Party, have been pushed out over time. We've seen that happen. We've seen right? it in here, especially. here in Hawaii, how yeah. many yeah. really talented yeah. women, mm -hmm. if they would keep them, the Republican right. Party could, could be right. Right. something. And it's usually women of color. That's, yes. that's one of the things that we've seen, especially um, many of, it's specifically Japanese American women who just felt like there just wasn't a place for them, that the party didn't want them. And, and that's fair. Philosophically, I didn't fit, but I think my gender caused a problem for me in the party, as well as the fact that I was non-white, to be honest. And even in Hawaii? Even in Hawaii, which I think there's something, you know, there was something that I, that I say all the time that happened to me in one of our caucus meetings. Uh, the Republicans had just lost big, and, and people were sitting around trying to figure out why. And I just openly said, I just openly said to them, you know, the reason why is that none of you are identifying with local people. I grew up here. This is my culture. And you don't, you're having trouble identifying with me, and I'm sitting at the table with you. And somebody said to me, one of my colleagues said to me, listen, Beth, this is the party of middle America. And it is our job to bring middle American values to Hawaii. And I just said, oh my goodness, that's a very very problematic statement and this is why you lose right it just well yes <laughs> and and that is problematic because that is what they work so hard to get rid of oh, yeah. with the big five right and the plantation right. Was right. exactly that, right? And now right. to see it come back, and it's still there. I went home and and I drove. I was so frustrated by that conversation. I drove home and I sat with my dad, who is a Japanese American. Sat down and I said, "They're racists." I didn't. They're racists. Like it. People kept saying it to me and I wasn't realizing <laughs> it. And and they're racists. And as I said it, my dad just nodded and he was like, "Yes, yeah." Yes. And you know, he he had he had helped me in my races. He had he had helped. With my campaigns, but I think he just, in his heart, also knew, you know, this wasn't the right place for me. And I'm, that's yeah. too bad because, uh, I, like I said, I am a political junkie, and I do believe in a two-party system. Sure. But this, this isn't working. No, no, no. And and unless they reach, and every now and then they reach out, yeah. and I see these great women that come on board. <laughs> And then pretty soon they're yeah. gone. Yeah. Well, and I, I think I used to say I believe in a 
in a two-party system, then of course I do. But I think more than anything else, I believe in dialogue and diversity in the system. And I think we can do that within the Democratic Party too. Right? Well, now, of course, I'm considerably older than you are. And I remember when we did have a vibrant Republican Party mm -hmm. and that you could get along with each other. And we, there were friends. Mm -hmm. There was not no animosity. They were just different. Yeah. And each district had a two-member district, so you would, you would vote it right. for the best person, and then you voted for your friend. Right. You know. Right. And right. So there wasn't this nasty animosity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people have said that the one of the worst things to happen to the Republican Party is multi-member districts yeah. getting uh, going away. Right? Well, but it was the Republican Party that. Oh, I know. It. <laughs> I know. They're the ones that suggested we can right. save money if we have oh, a Oh, it's a good member. example of Republicans shooting themselves in the is foot that, here. Uh, okay, yeah. well, this is the unintended It happens, yeah. Yes. yes. So, now that you are settled into the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, and you're right, there are some people in the Democratic Party, and I won't mention names, but you can tell by their voting record that this yeah. is not the place to be. That yeah. The only reason they're there is because with the D you win. Right, right. Yeah. Right. But, but I have seen a lot of them. Right. I hate to oh, say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't want to say go away, but the only way we have a strong two-party system is if they belong to the party and they work to make it stronger. Right. But, okay. <laughs> so, now, what I remember is that you were, like the rest of us, a part of the Women's March mm -hmm. in January. Yeah. And then you were not very kind <laughs> to Mr. Trump. <laughs> and I don't think that went over well oh. with your, your fellow. It did not. No. It did not. <laughs> they shouldn't have been surprised, though. I, I, I had not hidden that opinion for a full year at that point. Um, and. They shouldn't have been surprised, but <laughs> I guess he was the president at that point, so apparently I was supposed to fall in line. Oh, I know. Right. I know. I've known Gene Ward forever, oh. and, and even I had trouble talking to him at that point. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, now tell us, you have decided to run for Congress. Yeah. What, now the people in your district, for anybody that doesn't know, she, oh, uh, when Beth decided to change parties to be a Democrat, you polled your constituents. Yes. And yeah. what was the response? Uh, about 70% of people said that they didn't care which party I was in or that they wanted to see me switch. Um, the majority actually just said they didn't care. Um, and, you know, the other 30% did not want me to switch of the people that responded. So we got about 500 responses. Oh, very good. Which is good. Yeah. That's yeah. Very good. How many right. people are in the district? Uh, the voter count the is about 11,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. 500 was a great sample. Vote, yes. And you figure the people that didn't respond probably fall more into the camp of it didn't really matter to them. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, Most of them, they're surprised that they even know your name. Yeah, and I, I mean, Milani, Milani is a great place to represent. There's one place to sign wave, and that's it. People are coming in and out that way. So you get good name ID very quickly. I've been door to door so many times. Like they've seen my face so many times. Uh, they do know me, and I think that's part of why the response was just it doesn't matter to us which party you're in. You oh. know, they know me. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about me. What while you were in the house? Yeah. So when I first ran for office, um, I had actually gotten back from graduate school in 2008. I came back to Hawaii to save up. I wanted to go get my PhD or, or law degree eventually. Came back to Hawaii though because it was the recession. Wanted to find a job, so I did. Um, and the only place I could find a job was at the legislature. And so I started working for the House Minority at the time. I, I knew so little about, about politics that I didn't know that that meant Republicans even. I just you know needed a job, so I got in. Um, but when I was there, I just felt like there wasn't enough progress being made for people like me, right? My student loans were so high. I couldn't move out of my parents' house. Um, my parents were struggling to, to get by, too. And I just looked at the legislature and said, you guys are fighting about small things when Hawaii is facing these big issues and nobody's doing anything. And isn't this supposed to be what the Democratic Party is about? And, and if 
if all of these things, if protecting corporate interests, and if, if only listening to Bishop Street is what the Democratic Party is about now, then I guess I'm a Republican. That was you know, my thought process. And maybe as a Republican, I can make a change for, for regular families and average families. Um, so I tried really hard. That's why I got into politics. It's why I ran for office. I, I think I did, I was able to get a lot of uh, uh, legislation moving. Um, some very progressive bills actually passed the legislature. But you know, even then, I looked at it and said, well, I think I'm actually passing Democratic bills. <laughs> Okay. Not really, you know, things that would fit better in the Democratic Party. But what, like what? Tell so one about. example um, of the bills that I, one of the proudest ones for me was that I got coverage for women that wanted to get STD and HIV testing. So one of the things that was happening is that people that were grandfathered in and didn't have an Affordable Care Act uh, appropriate plan couldn't get coverage for STD testing. So they were really? having to pay out of pocket. Yes. And, and so what my bill said is that insurance companies have to cover it, regardless in Hawaii. That's turning out to be a really great thing because now that we're looking at you know, the Trump administration possibly rolling back some of the requirements, Hawaii people will be covered because I passed this bill, which I just find so rewarding. I mean, well, it is, but I'm just yeah. amazed that something as simple as a blood test yeah. would not be covered. No, and it's out of pocket, and people were paying as much as, you know, if, if you paid cash, you could maybe get it for $60. But, but who has as that? Simple, as yeah. simple as a blood test. Yeah. Yep. I, I'm amazed. Yep. I am absolutely amazed. Yep. Yep. So why would that be a Democrat or Republican issue? It doesn't necessarily have to be. A lot of the supporters that came out for it, though, were you know, the Planned Parenthood and the oh. typical sort of Democratic Party supporters. Uh, it shouldn't be a partisan issue, but you know, even within the Republican Party, yeah, people were like, "Why are you talking about STDs? Why aren't you talking about abstinence or you know, uh, that sort of thing?" Right? I just, I mean, the Republican Party has gotten very far to the right on a lot of these things. I, I can understand, like um, Gil Rivera. Now, I don't know okay. if he's way to the right or whatnot. But he comes from a district of Mormons. Correct. So we understand, mm -hmm. you know, we can't blame him because that's who that's in the district. Woodson, again, mm -hmm. I don't agree with his votes, but that's the district he comes from. Those are the yeah. people that elect him. So we, we understand that's not a Democrat or Republican. That's right. his neighbor. Right. Those, those are the people that voted for him. Right, right, right. So I... I yeah. But something as simple as a blood test, it, it kind right. of blows me away. Right, right. And, and I've, had, I've had some issues like that, too, because I come from another district that's, that's pretty socially conservative, or can be. And so one of the, the examples that I always bring up, something that I've had to learn with time as a legislator, when we were talking about medical marijuana dispensaries, I felt really strongly like we needed to pass it. My district survey was coming in at 70% against it. And so I said, OK, maybe people need to understand the actual human interest here. And so I wrote a letter to the whole district talking about this little girl in the district that was having seizures, couldn't get access to medi uh, medicinal marijuana, and she needed it. Um, so I was able to turn the district. We pulled again after that, and the district was 70% in favor because they were reading what I was writing. And, well, and so many of your people yeah. are in the military where it's mm -hmm. no. Right, and so making sure that they understand, I think it's all, our responsibility as legislators is to go back to voters with those tough issues and explain, no, this is why. Like, maybe you didn't have all the information. This is why I believe this. Please be on my side. I'm going to vote yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be doing. And I had to learn that with time. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's yeah. very good, too. Right? <laughs> that's a very good idea. Um, I wish more legislators did that, the follow-up. This, I am voting and this is why. Yeah. Oh, I think that is so good. Yeah. Because sometimes you come across things, and I didn't know this early on, but sometimes you come across things where your conscience is just different than that of your voters. And, and you, have to, you have to go with your conscience. Like, you have to go with what's right. But that doesn't mean that you don't answer to your voters, too. And there's a way to negotiate but, that. Yes. Yeah. Now, we need to take a break. OK. <laughs> and when we come back, I want to talk about you going to Washington. OK. Great. We'll Thank be you. right back.
This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. Hi, I'm back. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are talking with Representative Beth Ukamoto. This charming young lady has decided to run for Congress. Do you really want to go to D.C.? <laughs> I do. Miserable weather. <laughs> I do. You know, I I took my and I've been thinking about Congress. Um, and you always think about Congress, uh, but for me, the decision came in because I was thinking, do I really want to go to D.C.? Like this is such a mess, and politics is not getting better. And I was actually feeling really down about politics. I went to D.C. with my niece for the first time. She's ten, and we we walked through Congress. We walked through, and I just I remember. The, the magic of what D.C. Oh, can be. Oh, right? that building. When yeah. you walk through it and you feel those doors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you can hear your footsteps on that marble yeah. floor, it yeah. is mesmerizing, yes. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, you know, and, and more so just it's the building's great, like what it's about <laughs> is great, but then just all of it, just that feeling of this is what Congress should be. Should this be. used to be about change. It used to be about doing what's best for the voters, not just fighting amongst ourselves. And gosh, I, I believe it can be that again. So that's why I want to go. <laughs> Good. So, and what do you have in mind? Uh, now, you're going to represent a little state, mm -hmm. and we have less than 218 votes. How many? Uh, Democrats that we have now? Oh, I don't know the exact count. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully uh, more yeah, in hopefully November. <laughs> more. Um, just to let you know that to get a bill on the floor, you need 218. That's the magic number, 218 people. The Democrats don't have 218, so they get nothing right. to the floor. Right. Nothing. Right. As is 218 House members. So let's, we're hoping mm -hmm. that in November that number will change right. so we can at least get something to the floor. Yeah. So let's, I think it will, but <laughs> let's assume yeah. that you win and we have that magic number of 218. What would you like to do? What is your vision? What would you like to say? I represent Hawaii and this is what we want, we need we should have. Right, I would love to champion infrastructure reform um, and infrastructure funding. I think there are, and, and this, this could be like a two hour long conversation, so I'll sum it up. There, there are all sorts of grants that are not being well utilized. The Trump administration is trying to shift some of that funding to, to different places that would not be promoting smart growth. So I specifically think that in Hawaii, what we really need is three or four different grant programs that already exist but are on the chopping block right now to make sure that those programs are better funded and concentrated in smart growth areas like along the rail line, um, along our urban corridor, making sure that we are able to build housing. Because for me, I think that is the crisis facing our state. It's something that we can address on all levels, but the federal government has a lot that it can do. And that's in terms of energy grants, um, that's different things to fix the grid, make sure people can have affordable energy, making sure that our sewers are running properly. All these things that are like not sexy to talk about, but at the same time, things that we really need. Okay, now, you are running from CD1. Correct. That is a Congressional District 1. Yes. Where is that? 
So that is, it's, if you imagine sort of a triangle, it, it takes in Ko'olina and Kapolei on one side, it takes in Hawaii on the other side, and Nilani up at the top. So my entire district is within Congressional District 1. So all of CD1 is Oahu? Yes, yeah, so I, can, I call it urban and suburban Honolulu. Yeah. yeah. So CD2 would be it's, all rural Oahu and all the neighbor islands. Yeah, so it's the neighbor islands, it's Kailua, oh Wamanalu, yes. you know, all of those places. All of those places. Yeah. It's so different. Right, right. It's very different, and there are very different needs. And that's one of the things when we talk about energy policy, and when I've been talking to DC groups, they say, like, what kinds of energy policies are you going to, or environmental policies do you want to champion? I, there, there are a lot. For me specifically, though, I think in this district, it's making sure we have clean water, making sure the sewers are cleaned up and are not going to impact clean water, um, making sure, like, smart growth, that we have alternative modes of transportation, bike paths, like, all that stuff are environmental issues, but that's the way to talk about it in CD1, and I think in CD2 it's a completely different it way to talk about different. it. Yeah. What about the oceans? Do that, is that part of your... Oh, sure. I mean, I think we all, we're, we're all I'm concerned in CD1. about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we know, if, if for no other reason, CD1, we have, we have Waikiki, that's, that's our big tourism driver in CD1, Ko'olina as well. Um, making sure that we continue to have clean oceans, making sure that we have a sustainable uh, fishery, making sure that we're not, like I said, overfishing, treating the oceans poorly. Um, sea level rise is a big issue. You know, I recently heard that within the next 20 years, uh, we're going to have huge flooding problems in downtown Honolulu where we're hoping to have more growth, right, and housing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you where I live. Okay. We... When we moved in 1982, at high tide, the ducks would fly up to the seawall. Now, at high tide, the ducks walk into the yard. So that's how much it has risen yeah. in, in those years. So we can see the sea yeah. rise. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and that's something, you know, um, all the different things we're talking about, and that's such a national issue, it's a global issue. Um, all of these agreements we're pulling out of, all the things that, that there's suddenly not a focus, right, with this administration on environmental policy, and we need to change Although, no, that. No, they, oh, they were pretend like everything. it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. How, as, since we only have uh, four people in, <laughs> in Congress, what can you do to see that we do get those monies, that Hawaii does mm -hmm. get the money that you say we're entitled to, yeah. that is there, this grant money. What do you do to make sure we get that? I think there are a few things and a few reasons why I think I'm, I'm the best candidate for the race. I think one, one is that you have to be willing to be a workhorse, right? We, have to, we know this is going to be the, the largest, likely the largest freshman class we've seen in decades, which means our new member is going to be amongst a lot of new members. And I think the one way to set yourself apart is to say, hey, listen, I don't care if I get the credit. Just let me work on this bill, and while I'll, I'll help you do it. Like, just talk to your chairs. That's how I've gotten things done at the legislature here. Talk to the chairs and just say, hey, you don't even have to say it was me. Just let me work on this language. And let, this is what's important for Hawaii. Let me slip it in. And advocating that way. And then I think there's also the argument that we need to start building seniority back. We used to have a lot of seniority, and we don't have that now. Oh, that's right. We don't. No, and, and you know, for, for me coming in, I would be 35. Dan Inouye was 35 when he got elected. Patsy Mink was 37. That's why they were able to build the seniority they, they were able to build and to make the change they, they needed to make because you have to start really early and take all that time right. behind the scenes. And all of those cold, miserable winters. Right. <laughs> And I'm willing to suck it up, you know, like, I can, I can stay, I'll, I'll bide my time, work behind the scenes, I don't need the attention, I'll, I just want to get things done. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And working with, well, with just four people, it's easy to mm -hmm. have camaraderie. I, are there any Republicans running for that office? So far, uh, unless things have changed in the last week, no, there are no Republicans running for the office. So um, the primary, the primary will be is the it. election. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not good. No, it's it's probably not great for democracy. But I do think <laughs> that that they that the debate is happening in the primary. So I do think yeah. voters have a bunch of different options. There is diversity. 
Um, and, and hey, there's a really big spectrum here. It is. Um, it I is. think we have all points of view represented in this, um, in, in this particular group of people running for the primary. And I think that if people actually look at my record and what I believe, I'm the strongest Democratic candidate that holds the strongest Democratic values. Wonderful. That is yeah. great. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> But I still see that the see the Republicans lost you. That that's oh well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. That, this is where that I belong to though. So. That was not smart. Yeah. So they by not having a candidate, they've just abdicated. Yeah, and I'm and they, I mean they still have a week, right? So they'll probably come up with somebody. But I don't when think is the it'll filing deadline? J uh, July June June fifth, <laughs> next week. Next week. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So we're all crossing our fingers for one more week. Nobody else gets Nobody in the race. Nobody else gets <laughs> in the race. Yeah, yeah, because there's enough people running for CD1. Other than me, everybody's running. Right, right, right. <laughs> there, I think we are at five now. I would, I, and, and that's actually similar to 2014 as well. As well, but yeah, there are five people. So, yeah. Well, I am thoroughly impressed. And tell us a little bit more. We started talking about what you've done locally, mm -hmm. the bills that you've worked on locally. So for me, I've moved a lot of housing policy out of the state house, and it's not passed in the Senate for the most part. Um, one of the bills that I'm actually most proud of, it's not necessarily housing policy, but we have um, real estate investment trusts in Hawaii and nationally are not taxed. So it's, it's, a, it's a loophole. It's largely corporations owned by corporations. Um, and it was originally supposed to be a way for, for regular people to own property. That's not the way it's been. Now it's the top 1% is investing in this and not paying right. any tax. In Hawaii, 98% of those investors are out of state. So we don't even get that money through income taxes. And so what I tried to do is close that loophole. I took a couple of different shots at it. And it kept dying in the Senate, in the all-democratic Senate. I feel like I have to keep pointing that out because... This, this is a Senate that should have been in favor of, yeah, let's Well, who are tax, they owned by? But who are they owned by? Who yes. are they taking money from? from. Um, and, you know, and, and I've said that about some of, my, some of my opponents in the race, too. You know, why do they keep killing these bills that would help local people help keep taxes in Hawaii, make sure that out-of-state investors that are wealthy are going to be the ones paying for some of these infrastructure projects and affordable housing projects that we desperately need. We do. Yeah. We desperately need yeah. housing. Yeah. That's the reason that we have homeless people. Right. You can't make $10 an hour right. and pay $1,800 right. a month rent. Right. It, you just can't. Right. And I've been in favor of minimum wage increases and, 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 and a lot of the other programs, but at the end of the day, if we fix our housing crisis, we will fix so much. Oh, we yeah. will. We will. Yeah. Well. My dear, this has been a real pleasure with you. Thank you. And after you win, you'll come back and talk to us again, will you? Of course, yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And aloha, and we'll see you next time.